the last call, y'all. Cheers to you. It's Friday night. Last call. Pre-FOC show. Spec you haters. I'm going to spec you hate. But we don't give a damn because we're here talking about 10 picks that we like that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday. So we're going to talk about those books tonight. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Jack Mayo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What's going That's on? right. Letting everybody know, Brian, what to be on the lookout for coming up on Final Order Cutoff Day, Monday at 10 p.m. And we've got a great 10 books from a good variety of publishers to be on the lookout for. A little bit of reader picks, a couple speculation plays, and a couple just with some interesting cover art. And uh, we say this every week, but this is our favorite show. Uh, so let's have a little adult Kool-Aid and uh, let's get into it. Don't, I do have some in my glass. I did a little pre kool aiding <laughs> So, yeah. We're going to start talking about some books. And coming in with our first book on this last call show. Wait a minute. You know what? Before we start talking about these picks, do us a favor. Click that thumbs up button for us. Let us know you guys are enjoying this content. And if you haven't done so, click that subscribe button and hit that bell. So that way you get notified all the new videos coming out on this channel. We have Hot and Cold List. We have the Bolo Show where we're recapping the week's hottest releases. We have this show. And guess what? We have even more content planned. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed to this channel. And now we'll get back to the regularly scheduled program of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 45. All right. This is a new one coming from Boom Studios. Necessary Evil Continues. Now, We've been talking about this one pre-FOC pre show. We were letting you guys know that this Necessary Evil storyline was going to be the biggest storyline that Boom right. Studios... <laughs> I just blocked you over. Sorry. <laughs> this storyline. <laughs> my bad. I'm trying to think. This storyline. You can kick it from the top if you want. My yeah. bad. That's all right. <clears throat> That's right, Brian. Necessary Evil continues. And we've been talking about this storyline Pre, pre-FOC show, we let you guys know way in advance that this is where Boom Studios was going to go all in on the Power Rangers. This is the follow-up to last year's epic Shattered Grid storyline. And while every single issue hasn't necessarily been hot on the secondary market, they've all garnered serious reader buzz. This one, I expect no different. Because here's the thing. We get the first time the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the brand newly created Omega Rangers are going to end up interacting and teaming up in an issue right here with issue 45. So cover-wise for this, you're going to have that regular Jamal Campbell cover. There's also that Goni Montez foil cover that everyone raves about. There's that Chris Anka incentive variant, but there's also that Dan Mora FOC variant. That's the one we're always talking about. Each one of those covers is like a story panel. Each one of those covers also is a panel in a story that leads up to a big reveal at the end of this story arc. Isn't that correct, Jack? Absolutely. Be on the lookout for issue 49, that Dan Mora variant. We're talking to you about it way, way before FOC. So I'm sure there's people out there who are going to love that. But we've been letting you know about that one for months. Either way, you know what you cover I like, Brian? I'm a Goni Montez guy. I'm putting this foil set together. I think this foil set is way more beautiful in person than you could ever see on your computer screen, TV screen, tablet, phone, wherever you're watching. Right. And if you want to learn more about that, we had Arun Singh, VP of Marketing from Boom Studios, on this channel in an interview talking about those Dan Mora covers. So we'll put a card up and we'll also put a link to that video in the description. Here we are talking basket full of heads number one. We've talked on this channel a lot lately about horror comics. Even last week on the hot cold, we had a hot pick for Marvel horror. But this one's coming from the DC Black Label. You have the regular cover, which is a guy I can't really pronounce. I'll say Raiko. Mur you have a regular cover by Raiko Murakami. But what I like on this one is that variant cover, which is, of course, by Joshua Middleton. 
Right. And this falls under the DC black label brand. And we've talked a lot about our love for black label and the way that it fits into DC's publishing schedule, having these kind of darker, more adult themed stories. But the big negative that you guys have talked about is the size of these black label books being these prestige formats. We don't believe this one will be, judging by the cover price being $3.99 and the fact that cover B is a cardstock variant, which tends to fall in line with the traditional paper style of DC Comics. But this also falls under the Hill House imprint. And Hill House is, of course, referencing Joe Hill, who DC did a big deal to bring him on board and have him cultivate his own horror kind of boutique label within DC Comics. So it's great to see DC doing some creator-owned books. In case you're wondering who Joe Hill was, you might want to go back and read yourself a little bit of Lock and Key. It's kind of a big deal. Here we have... From Image Comics, Philadelphia number one. Now, this is going to have the regular cover by Jason Son and Alexander. But one thing to keep note of here, which is why we have this show, is there's an incentive 1 in 25 Francesco Mattina variant. Don't have the art for it right now, but they're calling it the Black Friday variant. That's one thing you want to make note of. And order it now, pre-FOC, to get that locked in. Rodney Barnes is the writer on this series, and the artist is Jason Sean Alexander. And you may realize that Jason Sean Alexander and Francesco Matino worked together on the Spawn series, specifically from like the two like '80s when it started to get real hot, leading up into issue 300. So I think there's going to be a natural kind of um, synergy with those two, and I think that the Sp the excuse me, <clears throat> and I think that the Matina variant is the one to keep an eye on. This is the beauty of the pre-FOC show. By you knowing in advance about this book, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't want you to know about this book, you can alert your LCS that you want this book, and they can do what they need to do to make sure that they order enough copies to get you that 1 in 25 incentive. Um, another thing to be on the lookout for is this book, two weeks before its release, will be available in preview format at local comic shop day. It is one of those local comic shop day releases that we talked about just last week. So if this series takes off, that, I would bet, would be the one to, to have because it would be a book that would almost be viewed as a first appearance of the characters in this series. So between that and the Matina variant, that's what I'm paying attention to for this release. Yeah, they call it preview. You might hear it called an ash can. But either way, that, that local comic shop day preview edition... Would be one to pick up. Also, it gives you an idea of whether you're going to be all in on this series. Well, I won't say all in because it's one issue. But at least whether you're going to like that first arc. Right, right. If you're a speculator who's looking to grab stacks, then yes, you can read that first one. See what you think. But if you're a speculator looking to grab stacks, ordering pre-FOC is the way to go. Definitely. And I can't wait to see that art from Matina for that 125 variant because... Oh, yeah. I bet it's going to be fire. And I bet people are mad as hell right now that we're talking about it. $10 comic cop. Sorry. <laughs> so here it is, guys. We're talking Red Goblin, Red Death number one. A lot of people are like, oh, more Red Goblin. Either way, this is going to have covers from regular cover by Philip Tan, but you're also going to have variants from Pete Woods, Ron Gardney, Ron Lim, Chris Daughtry. Yes, Chris, that Chris Daughtry, and Logan Lubera. Yeah, and you know what? You mentioned that some people may roll their eyes at this pick, but you know what, Brian? A little to look back into our Comic Book Invest CBSI Instagram account. That's at Comic Book Invest CBSI, the Instagram account of CBSI or ComicBookInvest.com. Um, and you look at the last two years, the impressions, that meaning the amount of people that looked at a given post. Uh, the announcement of this series garnered the sixth most impressions we have ever received on an Instagram post. Uh, that tells me that this is well received and at least polarizing meaning that people are talking about it, people are paying attention to it. And that post came on July 19th. So ever since this series was announced, 
way back in July, this has been one that I've had earmarked to say, this is one we probably should pay attention to. May not have a first appearance. Honestly, may not have a whole lot of spec involved in this issue in general. But I think people will pick it up to read. I think it's one to pay attention to. And I think it gives further credence, although I think Absolute Carnage is already doing that, to those first appearances, whether it's ASM 798, whether it's uh, you know the ASM 795, or ASM 263. I think which those was, books... Which one had the design variant that was like the first cover? 797. Yeah. 797. Minus, minus the store exclusives, right? There was like right, a store yeah. exclusive, I think, that had a cover. Also for 797, correct, yeah. So the, the design variant came out before the first really full appearance at 798. In 795, that's when Carnage, uh, the Carnage symbiote bonds with uh, his father, Norman, and kind of leads us down that, that path. That's a, a popular book. But I would say 798 is the book to have. It's just not the book that people want to be the book because it's so highly printed right that's a good point you know what's another good point is you guys need to be clicking that thumbs up button right now because i know right now you're watching this video and we're not getting enough thumbs up if you're enjoying this content make sure you, you click that thumbs up button for us and cheers to you guys for clicking the thumbs up I make boys cry number one. That's not easy for me to say. But I said it. This comes from Absolute Comics Group. This is going to have the regular cover. This is also going to have variants by Jamie Tindall. As well as a variant from Krees. I like the regular cover on this. But this is also going to tie into what? White Widow number five. The finale for that story. Is that correct, Jack? Right, yeah, this is the finale of their big crossover event. So I Make Boys Cry, or IMBC as they're called, is actually a group of black op assassins <clears throat> who use the latest high-tech weapons combined with their martial arts powers, and it begins at the time that they're just little girls. So another thing to note is that that variant that we talked about, it actually has a $9.99 cover price. I know sometimes that people don't like that, but should make for a lower printed uh, cover. Um, and you actually see the depiction of a boy crying on the cover. So, uh, you know, Absolute Comics Group is one of those brands where some people are on board, some people aren't. But it has gotten hot before with White Widow. It is possible to get hot again. Um, so it's one to definitely be on the lookout for. Marvel Zombies Respawn number one. To me, it kind of feels like Marvel is like, oh, DC's doing what now? Well, we got zombies. We'll bring them back. So here we have Marvel Zombies Respawn number one. We're going to have variant covers by Greg Land, Nick Bradshaw, Jung Jun Yoon, and Kyle. I can't say that damn name. Either way, Kyle Nagoo. We'll get comments for that. What do you think about Marvel Zombies Respawn pre-FOC, Mr. Bolo? Well, Marvel Zombies was never my thing, but it always had its cult following. It always had its group of people who really loved the Marvel Zombies brand. And it's like you said, I think that this is a response to Deceased and them looking at it and going, well, you know, if DC's doing this, we can do this better because we were doing this first. And, you know, horror's hot right now. So, so you, ne you never know what you're going to get, but <laughs> this is not a spec pick. This is not one that I would say um, is going to be a serious book for speculators to pick up. This is one to grab. If you're a horror fan, give it a read. Have some fun with it. If you're looking for a spec pick, I would say the original Marvel Zombies is a better speculation play if it gets residual heat from this series. But... That's more what I'd be in line to look at. Either way, it's got some great covers. Um, some stores are doing some great incent, uh, retail exclusives. The, some of the incentives are nice. Um, so I think this is going to be more art-based and story-based. Right. Which a lot of people would say deceased is kind of that way as well. I would agree. But now we got zombies. Again. From Marvel. Again. <laughs> Hey, 
Excalibur. Not really. It's a Mickey Mouse lightsaber. But we're talking about Excalibur number one right here. And it's going to have the regular cover by Mahmoud Azrar. We have variants from Mark Bagley, Mike McCone, Mike DeMundo, Chris Anka. But what say you about this book, Jack? Well, the real spec on this, or I guess where speculators have been paying attention to, is Psylocke taking over as Captain Britain. Both you and I have really kind of questioned any sort of like long-term validity of the Captain Britain character, but I know that there's a lot of people in the corner of this character. Um, this also is a new Excalibur team, and it really spins off of the House of X, Powers of X, or Powers of Ten, or whatever you want to call it, um, series. And we talked about when that series was going on, that the real key for the long-term success of the X franchises is, will they be able to sustain themselves once that miniseries is over, and they've got to go into these individual X teams? So this team here, you're going to get Jubilee and Richter and Apocalypse Rogue teaming up. Gambit. Rogue and Gambit teaming up with uh, Psylocke as the new Captain Britain. Um, there's certainly never been an Excalibur book that really made waves in the market, either Reader Buzz or um, as a speculation book. But we'll have to see what happens spitting out of Jonathan Hickman's epic miniseries. Now, I will say this is written by Teeny Howard. I think Teeny Howard is a serious up-and-coming writer for Marvel. I think she's excellent. But... I am more skeptical about this one. We'll see. No shade to our uh, great friends over in the UK, but I don't know. I don't know if this book will ever really see traction here in the States. Yeah. Will we get like a Brexit in issue number three? Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Monster Planet number one. Yes, you might say we're living on a wish and a dream, but there has been some Zenoscope books that have popped off in the secondary market. And one, I'm proud to talk about them because you know what? I'm Zenoscope VIP. I'm Zenoscope VIP, y'all. Right there. Says it. Brian Wood. Zenoscope. VIP. Either way, Monster Planet. Number one, quite a few covers for this. A lot of artists. I can't pronounce their names. I'm just going to put the cover art up on the screen right now for you guys to see. Because I'm not going to sit here and butcher everyone's name. One artist that I do like, that I do like a lot of these covers for, is Keith Garvey. That's the one up there right now as well. But, Monster Planet. Jack! (laughs) Well, you know, this is... We've talked about Xenoscope a lot on this channel because, obviously, you're a VIP you're a big Paul Green guy. That's what, that's your like hook for, for Xenoscope. I say that I'm not a big Xenoscope fan because I don't like, per se, the TNA comics. It um, doesn't usually get it for me. But I got to give Xenoscope their just due. They're doing a lot to diversify their portfolio. And I think this is another example of it. If you were to ignore that this is a Xenoscope release and just look at it for the solicitation itself, You've got a monster book, a horror book, and it says, Mankind has been all but wiped out, decimated by a virus that turns us into primal beasts, so everybody is a monster. Only a handful of humans are left, so just a few, struggling in a hostile world. But scientists among uh, them have discovered a way to cure the virus. To save us, though, they must call on creatures of our nightmares. We're talking about vampires, werewolves, and worse. And just the look at these covers, you get kind of an idea, almost a suicide squad of some of our most nightmarish characters. Now, there's some potential there. That sounds like something that could get adapted. That sounds like something um, that could see success in the comic book market. Um, And again, Zenoscope has gone and connected with fans with The Watcher. So they've had a couple releases that did connect with the speculation community. So it is possible. This is one I've got my eye on. This is what I'm paying attention to. And if not, it should be a good read at the very least. Right. And especially if there's one of those covers that you guys actually like, that's what you want to contact your comic book store about. Because not that comic book stores order all the covers for them. Zenoscope is one of those books that's really underordered. So if there's a cover that you like, that's why we have it in the video as well to make sure you contact 
your local comic book store or whoever you're ordering books from and get the cover that you want for this. We're not well, yeah. saying, hey, this book's going to make you $1,000. Or for those that are freaking complaining that they make however many a month selling books and we're hurting them. Either way, get the coverage you like and be happy. Right. This is an example of why the pre-FOC show exists, Brian. Because if you we just leave this up to LCS owners, they're just going to order pull list plus a few for the shelf. And they're probably going to order cover A or maybe like one of each cover type deal. So if you wait to do your Wednesday warrioring to grab this issue, you're going to be at the mercy of whatever shops are grabbing. And there's so many weekly releases. This is one that's going to go under the radar. So if you read this solicitation, if you hear what we're talking about, if you see the cover art on the screen in front of you and it excites you, it's something that you want to go ahead and, and get on board of, Make sure you let your local comic shop know this weekend that this is a book that you want and that you want to go ahead and pre-order. Right. And again, that's no knock to the comic book stores because if I was running a comic book store, I would do the same thing, order cover A, because you never want to have hanging inventory. But if you guys want one of these, make sure you guys let your comic book store know so they can order that for you. Yeah, yeah, def definitely no knock. There's too many releases coming out. It's too hard for them to predict what the market's going to do. As you may or may have not seen from our awesome robotic arm with the television screen showing you just now, we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 99. And this is going to have, of course, that cover A. It's got that Kevin Eastman cover. But we also have that 1 in 10 incentive variant. What's going on in this book, Jack? Well, this one may just be a connecting issue because we know that that issue 100 is going to be a major, major event. Issue 98, we had that crazy ending where suddenly you know the humans of new york city are turned into mutants uh similar to what we were just talking about with monster planet so so i think the the temptation is is going to be a view issue 99 as a connecting issue as maybe a filler issue but a lot of times before these big event issues that's when you get those surprise events those surprise first appearances those surprise deaths. So it's something to keep an eye out for. Also, I want to send a shout out to our sponsor, Frankie's Comics, who has a TMNT 99 variant on the way. So be on the lookout for that. Frankie'sComics.com. Shout out to Kevin Fields. He has not released that cover art yet, but we are anticipating, waiting on that one. That's going to be exciting. His previous two TMNT variants have been smash hits. Venom 19. This might be a title that you may or may not be aware of. It's called Venom. <laughs> I'm kidding because pretty much everyone's aware of Venom right now. Especially being written by Donny Cates. So this is going to have a regular cover by Kyle Hotz. But we also have... This is one of the few Mary Jane variants that I like. But it also has a Codex variant. But there's also a great store exclusive variant from our channel sponsor Frankie's Comics, right? Right, and actually, Brian, I would say there's two great store exclusives from Frankie's Comics because they've got the virgin version of that Mary Jane variant, which is I agree with you, is absolutely gorgeous. But then they've also got this stellar Tyler Kirkham um, variant that has a trade dress and a virgin version. And the reason that this really is important is when Tyler Kirkham first put this image up on Instagram, it got such widespread attention from the speculation community because well, it was just a close-up of dylan brock at the time right just like the face right but that's what people care about people are speculating on this issue because whether it was issue 17 whether it was issue 18 and now up to issue 19 everybody is waiting for that dylan brock revealed the understanding of who is dylan brock and what is he um and when you look at that virgin version of the frankie's variant you see his eyes kind of having that black glow. You see those tentrils, those symbiotic tentrils going. We know something is probably going to happen. This is a book I will say is going to have a higher print run than some of the other Venom releases. People are going to point to us talking about it right now. 
But the reality is this issue has been speculated on in speculation communities for weeks and months. This is the one that was earmarked from the get-go as being possibly the Dylan Brock issue. Um, and there were some people who thought maybe 18 and 18 didn't pan out. The solicit for this one says, as carnage rules and chaos reigns, the symbiotic offspring of Venom make their presence known by hunting Eddie Brock's son, Dylan. But there's more to Dylan than Venom, Carnage, or even the maker understand. And once they learn the truth, nothing will be the same. So the solicit really is heavy handed, letting us know that this is the Dylan issue. Um, and with 18 not panning out to be that like last page splash page reveal that a lot of people were hoping, this seems to be the one to grab. Now, there's also that 1 in 25 codex incentive that you mentioned. It'll have a smaller print run than obviously cover A or some of the store incentive variants. But another cool thing is it has Agent Venom on the cover. Agent Venom is a popular cult character. Although Flash Thompson is currently dead in the storyline that we're going on, who knows anything can happen. Could just be an homage to Flash in general as the Codex variants show all of the various symbiotic characters. But this is really all about Dylan. Whether you're all in on 19 or not, this is the issue when it hits newsstands on, what is it, October 30th. This is the one where you want to have your Venom number 7s and Venom number 9s ready. Because that is the day when they very well could pop beyond belief. So there's our picks for FOC, but as always on this video, we're gonna get into later printings. Jack actually, after he finishes his adult Kool-Aid, he's gonna tell you right now what's coming up for the later printings. Well, usually we've got a huge list, Brian. This week is a little bit shorter, which is probably a good thing for a lot of LCS owners and a lot of uh, collectors' pockets out there, but, Boom Studios is coming with Buffy the Vampire Slayer Hellmouth number one, the third printing. IDW's got two late printings. They've got Kanto number three, the second printing, and Usagi Yohimbo this number two, the second printing. Image Comics, who just dropped Nomen Omen number one, is dropping the second printing. And it's new cover art. Yes, which is a big deal, of course, if you're a uh, late printing a connoisseur. But the Marvel Comics is dropping... Just two this week. Mm -hmm. Amazing Spider-Man number 30, the second printing, which is an Otley cover. And Avengers number 24, second printing. Lastly, Vault Comics has their hit series, The Plot, plot number one, the second printing dropping. So, Jack, thanks for all those later printings. Also, once again, if you want to see the full FOC list, make sure you guys head over to SimpleMansComics.com. we got the full FOC list there, plus a bunch of other great articles trying to add different information that you will not see on this channel we're starting to put over at simplemenscomics.com so make sure you guys check that out make sure you sign up for the newsletter and if you haven't done so click that thumbs up button on this video i double dog dare you we've received plenty of comments from people that have asked for this show and this is why we do it we appreciate everyone in this community so thumbs up for everyone here you guys click that thumbs up button on the video but i'm telling you right now Thumbs up to everyone that watches this, watches all the content on here, provides those comments, supports us on Patreon. That's why we do the video. That's why we do all everything on Simple Man's Comics. So I appreciate Simple Man's Comics family. And Jack, as always, you get the last word because I am drinking my Kool-Aid. Well, for my last word, Brian, I'm going to highlight one more book. I'm talking about Mad Cave Studios' Woven Heart. Now, it's not on the FOC list because Mad Cave doesn't get to participate in the FOC program, but it does come out the same week as all of these books. And letting your LCS know, along with the rest of the books you want to order for the October 30th release date, will benefit your ability to get these books as Mad Cave Studios has tends to have a micro print run of around two to 3,000. But we're talking Wolven Heart number one. This is a, Wolven Heart is a organization led by legendary professor Van Helsing, dedicated to monitoring an, uh, anomalies in the space time continuum. Um, this book takes place in the 16th century. It has been compared to Doctor Who, Castlevania, Penny Dreadful, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It is written by the head of Mad Cave Studios, Mark London, who also wrote. Knights of the Golden Sun, who also wrote Battle Cats, who also wrote Honor and Curse, and not just that, 
If you want to order an amazing homage cover, you can do that right now by heading to comicbookinvest.com, hitting that variant tab. We have two versions available. We have that exclusive virgin cover with only 50 copies available to the public, as well as a trade dress cover. And it homages Tomb of Dracula number 10, the first appearance of Blade. And that is available now for pre-order coming out October 30th. Yes, make sure you head over to comicbookinvest.com right now. Get yourself those variants. And if you're a Patreon premium subscription box subscriber, Eisner tier, we got you covered on this trade dress, buddy. Those will be in those bolo boxes. But with that being said, cheers to you. I had a good night. Hope you guys had a good night. Sorry for Jack for dealing with me with too many adult Kool-Aids. And to the audience as well. But FOC, get your orders in before Monday night at 10 p.m. That's when the cutoff actually occurs. If you liked anything you saw here or any of those books that are on the final or cutoff list on SimpleMansComics.com, make sure you get those orders into your LCS. We prefer you go to your local comic book store, support the brick and mortar stores because they need all the support they can get. Help keep them in business, but if not, then go online, but get those orders in before Monday night, before 10 p.m. Eastern. That's when Final War Cutoff occurs. And with that, as always, I'm going to say good night.